All right, so this is Ajax. Can everybody say hi, Ajax? Hi, hi Ajax. Ajax. Yeah, and this is my friend Shayla, as you hi. know. Can everybody say hi, Shayla? Hi, hi Shayla. Shayla. Yeah, but she's going to help me with part of this little presentation. So, as you heard, Ajax is a guide dog. Does anybody know what guide dogs do? Guide the person. Uh-huh. What does it mean to guide the person? When they're blind. Okay, good. Um, what a guide dog does, or also known as a seeing eye dog, they will um, guide blind people and help guide them so that they don't run into things and they don't go or just walk straight out into the street and accidentally get hit by a car. Mm hmm Good job. Good job. So, I don't know how many people could see us back there, but he was stopping because there were a couple of other dogs, and he was a little distracted by them, but he also didn't want to walk by them. He was trying to tell me there's not enough room, but we had to go that way. So, um, he, sometimes, you know, you, you, have you ever been on a sports team or whatever, and sometimes the communication gets a little kind of, just a little crazy? Well, that's what happens sometimes with a service dog team. And so even though we have been a team for a little while, we're still working it out. That's the way communication is. But we're doing a, <laughs> we're doing a lot better than we did in the beginning. <laughs> anyway, his job, as you said, he did a very good job. His job is to keep me safe. And of course, by keeping me safe, he's keeping himself safe. And so he will stop for curves, and he will take me around to obstacles, and he will um, pay attention to what cars are doing. So if I'm listening to traffic and I make a mistake, he is actually trained to disobey me. But in other ways, he has to be very obedient. Yeah, and he also likes to sleep. <laughs> Uh, he has to be very obedient because if we're in our, ever in a dangerous situation or, or so that we can get somewhere safely, he has to listen to me. So there are some very important things that have to happen in order for us to do our thing safely. Number one, of course, is obedience. So he is trained with this. It's called the clicker. And this is how they do the training. And I use it to reinforce training, which means to sort of remind him of what he's supposed to do, and sometimes I train him to do new things with it. So Ajax, sit. Good boy! And he knows that sound. It means food. It means food, huh? Yeah. It means food. The reward, because he did exactly what I told him to do. Sit down. Good boy! Good boy! And so we also use this for him to find landmarks. There's an important landmark he has to find so that I know where I am. I can use this to teach those to him. Um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I just like to ask, but how do you know if he sits or lays down? Well, I can feel him. Did you see me reach for him with my hand? I was making sure he'd done what I what I told him to do. Oh. But I'm going to open it up for questions in a few minutes. So can you hold those in your head? Sure. Okay. Thanks. All right. So. Um, and the next important thing, can anybody tell me, should you feed, if you see somebody with a service dog, should you feed that dog? No. no. Bingo. Exactly. You should not feed that dog. Can anybody tell me why? They're working. Exactly. They're working. Can you tell me another reason? Because if they're doing the wrong thing, you feed them, they think they're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Distractions, distractions. So we're going to do a little demonstration here. Ajax, sit. And Miss Shayla is going to try and feed my dog. And we're going to see if Ajax can pass the can test. Can take your cane? Um, put your hand sure. out um, kind of to your left. There you go. All right. Ajax Ooh. likes nice all food. Yeah, he kind of failed. He had to get corrected and do it over it earlier. Yeah. OK, Shayla, your heat is in front of you. No. No. Good boy. Can you stop? No, he just smelled. He smelled it. That's I'm all. Like trying to, okay, let's try this again. So it's hard for me to tell sometimes. Try again. Good boy! That's a good oh, boy! No. See, <laughs> as soon as you say good boy, then he thinks it's okay to eat it. Yeah. So. All right, so as soon as I say goodbye, pull your hand, pull, good boy, pull your hand back. Let's try it again. Yeah, do it again. 
Do you have? Do you need more food? She needs. Oh, Shayla needs, Shayla needs more oh. food. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Eat it all. Sorry. You little goober. You're hungry. Okay. You're. You're. There you go. Good boy! Good boy! Yes, that's okay. Now you get the prize. Now you get the prize. He loves these. He loves carrots. Yeah, they're baby carrots. Yeah. He likes baby carrots. Yeah, he does. Carrots are okay, Jackson. supposed to help eyesight, apparently. I don't believe in it. But. Maybe if some of you can do that trick, you'll get a carrot, too. Mm -hmm, yeah. No, just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe if you eat your broccoli, you'll get a carrot, right? Um, Okay, so those, that, is the, that is one of the most important things so that we can do our job and do our thing safely. The other most important thing, can anybody answer this question? If you see a service dog, should you pet that dog? No. Mm -hmm. Correct. Why? It distracts him. Mm -hmm. Bingo. It distracts him. So what you do is if you really want to pet this dog, you can ask. You just have to know that sometimes the owner will have to say no. And sometimes the owner will say yes. But you won't know unless you ask, right? So it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask, but you have to be ready for the owner to say no. And usually the owner has a very good reason for saying no because maybe the dog has been acting up that day, is too excited, and it's just not a good idea. Okay? So now we can take questions. Um, don't raise your hand. Say your name if you've got it. <laughs> um, okay. My name is Zach. Say no. Um, that one time when you gave me a carrot because you didn't eat the food, um, why didn't you use the clicker? Because you don't always have to use the clicker. The clicker is for training. But see, this is something he knows. This is something he knows. He knows he's not supposed to do it. And I think the reason he went ahead and ate it from her when I said good boy is because it is dog food. So I think he thought I was telling him, okay, go ahead. Because when we're at home, he won't eat out of his bowl until I tell him it's okay. Yeah, he's awesome. Aren't you? Yeah, he knows it too. Okay, another question? About how long have you had a year? Um, on 4th of July, it will be three years. See that on 4th of July? Mm-hmm. And how old is Ajax? He's four and a half. He's four and a half. So he lived with a puppy raiser for a while. And a puppy raiser is somebody who teaches him the things like sit and lay down and teaches him how to be a good dog in public. And then he goes to guide dog school for a few months where he learns how to do the guide work and how to keep somebody safe. And then I had to go to school with him for two weeks to learn how to use him. Is this your first guide dog? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's my first, so I still make a lot of blenders. <laughs> it's actually quite refreshing when you hear from somebody else. I've been using a guide dog for 10 years and I still trip over his feet. <laughs> Holly, I have an interesting fact on guide dogs that I read on their uh, newsletter. Yeah. My name is Ken Warkington, and I'm the executive director of Valley Center for the Blind in Fresno. And so I've, uh, I've been in that position for two years. And one of the things that the guide dogs uh, newsletter said is, can you imagine what the value of a seeing eye dog or a guide dog is? Anybody have any guesses, or does anybody know? They estimate, go ahead, do you have a? Right, that's their value as far as what they can do, but they put a value as far as a, a cost, like financially what it takes to, um, to raise a dog, to be a guide dog. They estimate it to be between fifty and $60,000. Okay, so that's why these, there's a lot of training, there's a lot of breeding that goes into these animals, and they're very, very valuable. Now, fortunately, through good people like yourselves and donations, they're able to provide these animals at no cost to a lot of the uh, people who qualify to have a, a guide dog because, as you know, that would be very, very difficult to afford. But just to give you an idea of how valuable these animals are.
And Holly, maybe you could also tell them about how long a guide dog works for. Yeah, sure. And the first thing, the first thing I want to point out is just to, um, since we're coming up on Fourth of July, it's good to appreciate our country. In our country, um, usually we don't have to pay for a guide dog, or we don't we have to pay very little. But in other countries, it's a lot harder for blind people to have these dogs because they have to pay for them. So that's one of the awesome things about our country is the opportunities and the things that we have. Um, as far as how long a guide dog works, so a guide dog can work. Some of them have worked around 10 years, and some of them work less. It depends on the dog. Can anybody tell me why a guide dog would have to stop working? Good. Loss of hearing, loss of sight, loss of sound. Yes. Remember, say your say your name because oh. she can't see you. Raise your hand. Um, when a guide dog gets old, it gets weaker and eventually doesn't have the strength to be a guide dog anymore. You're right. You're right. And a guide dog can also sometimes just plain get tired of working. They they like doing stuff for us. Ajax likes his work, but you know sometimes they like to rest, and so sometimes they just say, you know what? My working days are done. I'm tired of my job and it's time to retire because it's no longer safe to work with a guide dog. When they're tired of their work, they won't work well and it's not safe anymore. How long were you blind before you got the dog? Um, okay, I was born blind and I didn't get him until I was 27. So do you find it easier to have the dog getting around? Mm, easier getting around? I would say yes, overall. Um, I don't have a cane stabbing me in the abdomen every time I want to, you know, it gets stuck in something. That's painful. Um, but also I find it a lot easier socially. Um, and um, in some ways it's a little bit harder because he's a big responsibility. I have to pick up his neck. <laughs> See the little blue thing on his harness? The little, I think it's blue. Um, the little bone-shaped thing, I carry bags in there, and I guess you, I think you can all guess where, what those are for. <laughs> yes, because it's important to be polite and courteous, and sometimes he's got to go, right? And so I've got to pick it up. Great. Well, our time's up. Okay. I wanted to say the reason Holly said it's easier socially is because we often have a stigma. When we see a blind person, we don't speak. We don't say anything because we don't know what to say. Worst possible thing you can do with somebody who, doesn't, who can't see you, they need to hear your voice. So if you see a blind person walking down the street, say, hi, my name's Jack. Well, unless your name's not Jack, you should probably use your real name. <laughs> but, but you know, be friendly with your, your voice and talk to them. You don't necessarily have to point things out to them because most of them, if they're out and about, they know. They know how to get downstairs, upstairs, you know, to wherever they're going. But just try to act as normal and friendly as you possibly can like they're not different because they they're not different the, other than the fact that they can't see so that's the I think that's the reason why she said socially it helps because people then speak because they want to know about the dog it's kind of like that bridge yeah, they talk so to me. yeah <laughs> all right thanks for your attention yeah.